On June 10th, 2017, just before 10 a.m., a Fort Wayne couple, Noel Trice and Brian Keith Lash, were found stabbed to death in their home. The night before, they had both organized a small party for their family and friends, but in the morning, Noel's sister and mother found them brutally murdered in their own home. Who could have done such a thing? What could be their motivation behind it? And was the suspicious activity of selling marijuana that Noel and Brian were involved in related to their death? Hi, and welcome back to Mysterious Hook. Today, we are looking at a six-year-old case that was finally solved in 2023. So without further ado, let's dive right into this mystery. Today's case will take us to Fort Wayne, a city located in northeastern Indiana. With a population of more than 250,000 people, it is the second most populous city in Indiana. Fort Wayne's economy in the 21st century is based on distribution, transportation, and logistics. The city also boasts one of the country's best zoos, a popular hands-on science center, great wedding venues, and a famous theater, amongst other things. Noel was born on June 28, 1991 and was 25 years old as of 2017. Brian, on the other hand, was born on July 7, 1987, in Fort Wayne, where he grew up with his sister, Amber Nicole Lash. Those who knew Brian when he was little described him as someone who was always getting into trouble. It's not clear when Brian and Noel met and got married. However, they both lived together in an apartment located at 4811 Weiser Park Avenue in Fort Wayne. Brian and his wife, Noel, had a young son who they named King Richard. In addition to this, Brian also had two daughters named Olivia Joyce Lash and Alexis Marie Lash, but whom he had them with remains unclear. To put food on the table, both Noel and Brian were involved in the selling of marijuana. The drug deals were usually done in locations far away from their home, however, these deals were sometimes conducted within their home. It was a risky business, as the drug trades often brought them in contact with all sorts of dangerous people. Brian and Noel were well aware of the dangers, but the profit they were making from the business kept them going. However, things got really messy when they least expected it. On June 9, 2017, Noel and Brian decided to organize a party at their home. It wasn't something big, but was more of a get-together. What the couple had in mind was to invite a few family members and friends over for a barbecue, and then watch the Cleveland Cavaliers and Golden State Warriors basketball game that was happening that evening. They also planned to use the opportunity to sell marijuana to those who wanted to purchase it. It was a good plan for them, as it would give them a chance to kill two birds with one stone. They began to make preparations and expectation of their visitors. Once the evening came around, those that they had invited began to gradually arrive and pleasantries were exchanged. Amongst those who showed up were Noelle's sister and her boyfriend. A friend of the couple, known as Dustin Neal, was also one of those who attended the party. Noelle and Dustin had known each other since they were kids. At around 9 p.m., the game which they had all gathered to watch began, and they all sat down with plates of barbecue and bottles of drink and hands to enjoy it. The atmosphere became increasingly noisy due to the noise made by the men whenever their favorite team scored. In the end, the game ended with the Cavaliers winning. It was already late by this time, and the guests began to take their leave one after the other. Dustin also announced his departure and bade the couple goodbye. The people who remained were Noelle's sister and her boyfriend. With nothing left to do, someone suggested playing a card game, and the rest agreed to it. They all sat down to the game, and in no time were engrossed in it. Several hours went by, and it wasn't until 3 a.m. that they all decided that they had had enough. Noelle's sister and her boyfriend then took their leave. Due to how exhausted Brian and Noelle were, they went straight to bed, telling each other that they would clean up the next morning. They had also made plans to meet up with Noelle's sister and mother for the New Haven Canals Day, an annual festival with plenty of family fun and entertainment. 
a few minutes before 10 a.m. on June 10th, 2017, Noelle's sister and her mother, Kimberly Gomez, arrived at Brian and Noelle's home to check up on them. They had earlier called the couple's mobile phones to remind them of the plan they had made concerning the festival, but neither of them had picked up. Their thought was the two were likely tired from the previous night's party and had overslept. Noelle's sister and Kimberly knocked on the front door of the house, but got no response. It was dead silent, except for the noise made by nearby birds, as well as the sound of vehicles in the distance. After knocking and calling out the couple's name to no avail, they decided to try the door and discovered that it was unlocked. They stepped into the unusually silent home and immediately knew that something was wrong. There was a faint smell in the air, but they could not immediately tell what it was. Noelle and Brian had not yet cleaned up, and this was obvious from how disorganized the living room was. There were bottles lying everywhere, as well as plates that had been used to serve barbecue to the guests the previous night. Amid the chaos, Noelle's sister noticed something odd. The about 50-inch Vizio TV that they had all watched the basketball game on the previous evening was missing. She also noticed that a video cassette recorder was nowhere in sight. A lot of things went through her mind in that instance, but none of it made any sense. She and her mother Kimberly made their way to the couple's bedroom, and that was when they saw the blood. The faint smell they had perceived upon entering the house was blood, and as they moved closer to the bedroom, it became stronger. At that point, their anxiety had doubled because they knew that something really bad had happened. When they opened the bedroom door, the blood was even more than they anticipated. On the bed were both Brian and Noel. They were covered in blood, and it was obvious that they were both dead. They both had what looked like stab wounds all over their body, but it seemed as if Noel had it the worst. There were empty, bloody holes in the place where her eyes should have been. Upon seeing the gory scene that looked like something out of a horror movie, Noel and her mother simultaneously gasped in shock and screamed. They couldn't believe what was before their eyes. It was all too much to take. 911 was immediately dialed, and in a matter of minutes, police officers from the Fort Wayne Police Department arrived on the scene. They immediately secured the area and began to do a thorough sweep of the house. In the hallway between the bedroom and kitchen, they noticed a black-colored object sitting on the floor. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered that it was a mobile phone that belonged to Noel. The phone was kept as evidence. Officers took a look at different parts of the house and collected all that they believed would help them in their investigation. After this was done, Noel and Brian's bodies were transported away for autopsy. Two days after the murder took place, the autopsies of the dead couple were conducted by Dr. Scott Wanger, and the result showed both had died as a result of fatal stab wounds. The result also made detectives believe that before Noelle died, she had tried to shield herself from her attacker. This was due to the defensive wounds to her hands, arm, legs, and feet. The result of the autopsy allowed the couple's death to be ruled as a homicide, and Detective D. Engelman was one of those placed in charge of investigating the case. The first thing he did was interview the friends and families of the deceased couple. One of those that he interviewed first was Noelle's sister. When asked about what she knew, she told the detective about the party that had been organized the night before the murder and stated the number of people that had been present. In addition to this, she revealed to the detective that her sister, Noelle, was selling marijuana and that the majority of people who had attended the party were there because they wanted to purchase the drug. She also mentioned the missing TV and VCR she had noticed. On the 14th of June, 2017, Detectives decided to take a closer look at the items that had been taken from the couple's home. They knew these items could potentially provide the answers that were needed to solve the case. Noelle's black mobile phone, which was found in the hallway, was examined for fingerprints. 
The process was carried out by latent print examiner Pam Shannon. Noelle's fingerprints were found all over the phone. However, another fingerprint that did not belong to her was also found on it. Even though it was a partial fingerprint, detectives were not discouraged, but began working round the clock to find a match. At first, they speculated that the fingerprint might belong to Brian, but after checking through their database, they quickly discovered that they were wrong. The fingerprint belongs to 30-year-old Dustin, the couple's friend. Detectives realized that Dustin was among the people they had not interviewed and decided to do just that. The interview was conducted on June 17, 2017, which was a day before both Noelle and Brian's bodies were laid to rest. What detectives saw when Dustin sat down for an interview with them was a man who was still mourning the loss of his friends. When questioned, Dustin revealed that he had known Noelle and her sister for about 20 years and went on to talk about the good times they had spent together. He told detectives that he was often at Noelle and Brian's house due to how close he was with them. When asked about the drug trade the couple was involved in, he responded that he was aware of it. Dustin also said that Noelle had about two to three pounds of marijuana, which was worth a lot of money. But according to him, no drug deal occurred on the night of the party. He also told Detective Engelman that after leaving the party, he had gone straight to his mother's house, also located within the city. He had not stayed there for long and had later gone on to a friend's trailer in New Haven, and that was where he spent the night. After all this, Detective Engelman had one final question for him. He looked Dustin in the eyes and asked if he went back to Noelle and Brian's apartment after leaving that night. Dustin responded that he hadn't, and with this, he was allowed to go home. Detectives decided to interview the friend whose trailer Dustin claimed he had spent the night at. On the 20th of June 2017, which was 10 days after the murder, Dustin's friend was interviewed by detectives, and he was able to confirm that all that Dustin had said was the truth. He told them that he had been at work when Dustin arrived at his home, but he was able to get in because he had a spare key. With this, detectives had no further leads in the case and the heat of the investigation died down. Dustin remained on the police's radar. They strongly believed that he knew more than he was telling them. However, due to a lack of solid evidence, they could only watch and wait. It would take more than a year for the investigation to pick up once again. Detectives were able to locate an individual who had been in contact with Dustin at the time of the murders. The individual, whose identity was not revealed, told detectives that Dustin had called him on the morning of June 10, 2017, saying that he had a large amount of marijuana he wanted to sell. According to the unidentified individual, Dustin sounded uneasy over the phone. The marijuana he was trying to sell was high grade and was about one to two pounds. He told detectives that he had been surprised by the offer and wondered how Dustin had gotten the drug in his possession. This was because, at the time, Dustin was broke and there was no way he could have bought so much. After this revelation, Dustin shot to the top of the detective suspect list. To confirm that what the unidentified individual had told them was the truth, they took a look at cell phone records and it showed that phone calls had been exchanged between Dustin and the unidentified individual on the morning of the murder. Almost three months after this, detectives interviewed Dustin once more. This time around, the interview was not conducted by Detective Engelman, but by Detective Brian Martin, also of the Fort Wayne Police Department. Dustin maintained all he had said the last time he was interviewed, but this time around, he added that he drank beer and smoked marijuana upon getting to his friend's trailer house in New Haven, and that was where he had been when he heard about the murder. They did not ask him about the marijuana he had allegedly tried to sell, but allowed him to leave. Following this, detectives spoke with Dustin's friend who resided in New Haven, and he confirmed to them that Dustin was selling marijuana from his trailer on the day of the homicide. After this, 
Detectives sat down to carefully review all the available information, and it suddenly dawned on them that nothing they had was solid enough to link Dustin to the murders or build a case against him. They needed something more that would prove beyond reasonable doubt that he had been Noel and Brian's killer, and without this, there was little that could be done. The pace of the investigation slackened, and things went quiet. In the blink of an eye, five years had gone by since the murder of Noel and Brian. Then, just when detectives least expected it, another individual came forward and gave them a testimony that helped them finally solve the case. The individual was a man by the name of Tyler. He had not been happy with the way the investigation had dragged on for years, and so he decided to speak to the authorities and tell them everything he knew about the murder. I just felt like I had to do the right thing, Tyler said. On July 28, 2022, Tyler was interviewed by detectives after telling them that he knew something about Noel and Brian's murders. He revealed that he was friends with a man named Dean, and during one of their conversations, Dean had once informed him that his half-brother had carried out the killing. As it turns out, the half-brother who Dean had been talking about was none other than Dustin. According to what Dean told Tyler, Dustin had gone to the couple's house in the early hours of June 10, 2017 to steal some marijuana. He had believed that no one would be at home. Armed with only a knife, he had climbed through a window into the house and had proceeded to the bedroom to look for what he had gone there to steal. However, the noise he made woke Brian, and upon seeing that his cover was blown, he stabbed him. In the commotion, Noelle also woke up and Dustin stabbed her as well. She had, however, put up a fight, and he had responded by stabbing her multiple times. He had bragged to Dean that he stabbed her so hard in the face that the knife got stuck and he had to put a foot on her body and pull to retrieve the knife. After killing the couple, he had stole the marijuana and gone to his friend's place in New Haven, where he burnt his bloody clothes in a fire pit. By the time Tyler finished his narration, detectives could hardly believe their ears. They knew that with the testimony, the case was closer to being solved than ever but they had to confirm Tyler's word, and for this, they interviewed Dean, Dustin's half-brother. Throughout the interview, his words were consistent with what Tyler had earlier told them. On the 31st of October, 2022, Dustin's cell phone was analyzed by an FBI detective. It was a final and important step that had to be taken to ensure that they were not chasing shadows. Well, as it turned out, the result of the analysis showed that Dustin had been near Noel and Brian's residence between 6.20 a.m. and 6.04 a.m. on June 10, 2017, which was the day of the murder. This was in contrast to what he told detectives about not going back there after leaving the party. In December 2022, officers arrested Dustin in Wells County and charged him with two counts of murder, two counts of felony murder, and two counts of robbery resulting in bodily injury. Detectives were pleased that they had finally brought the case to a close by making the arrest. They were also grateful for the witnesses who came forward and provided crucial information that was helpful to the case. If it was your family, your loved one who was taken from you in a violent way, you would want someone with that information to come forward. You would hope they would do it right away, but if they come forward at all and can provide that information and sit down with us, it usually brings good stuff to the case that we can use and move forward with evidence, Detective Martin told the media following Dustin's arrest. At the moment, Dustin remains in jail, awaiting punishment for his crime. It is a relief that Noel and Brian's murder has been finally solved, and through this, their families have been able to get the much-needed closure that they deserve. But do you think there is a chance that Tyler's life might be in danger since this testimony was what finally solved the case? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.